Hello YouTube friends, Gail's here, gonna play some Genshin. I thought the new event looked super cute with the cats, so hopefully it lives up to my expectations and we get to see some cute cats. I'm not really sure what it's about because I forget because it's been so long since I've seen the live stream, but we'll see. <laughs> um, they're mowing the yard outside, so hopefully that's not coming through. But if you hear a humming sound, that's probably what it is. Uh, we're here on the main screen because it's going to get right into it as soon as I click because I accidentally triggered it when I went to the monset. And I was like, no, I wanted to record it because cute cats. So I've been waiting until I could record it. Still a little sick, feeling better though. I might cough a little bit, but I can always try and edit that out. Oh, looks like Margaret is talking with those two people over there. Wait, is that Rosaria? Huh, she's standing next to an adventurer Paimon doesn't recognize. I think she's also here to play with some cats. Say no more, Valerina. I'll continue to help you out just as Victoria requested. Look after the cats, check up on their health, give them a bath. These are all things well within my capabilities. That doesn't solve our biggest problem, though, Miss Rosaria. The cats have been so anxious. If we can't get them to trust us, they're sure to get sick from all the anxiety. We just opened, and the Furball Fortress is already about to go under. Aww. Well, panicking certainly isn't going to solve the problem. The fact is, neither of us has a way with cats. That's not something I can change. Hi, Rosaria! And hello to you too, Miss Adventurer! Sounds like you're all really worried about something. Our cat saviors! They've appeared already! Uh, saviors? Uh, seems a bit sudden considering we just met. Sounds like a title we'll have to live up to. I'll try to keep it short. My name's Valerina, and I really like small animals. Recently, I've been trying to set up a shelter for stray cats. I call it the Furball Fortress. Aw, that's nice. I thought it would be a good way to rescue those poor animals that have nowhere to go. Plus, getting them off the streets will improve the overall environment and look at the city. It's a win-win. The sisters over at the church heard about my plans and sent over the kindly Miss Rosaria to help. I wouldn't exactly describe myself as kindly. I just accepted the assignment from Victoria. After all, I was the only one with any knowledge of medicine or the spare time to help. I was going to say, is Rosaria really the best choice for this? Well, it seems like you've got quite the plan, Valerina. Thanks for bringing us up to speed. So, what had you so worried just now? Are you short on Mora? Are you missing something you need? No, I've got more than enough Mora. The funds, the location, the supplies, all the various procedures. They've all been settled. The main problem is... Um... The cats. They, uh, keep swatting at me. Aww. They're always hissing and swatting. They won't let me approach them, not even with treats. <sighs> the cats are afraid of me as well. They run away the minute I'm in the vicinity. Oh, Paimon has heard something like this before. There's something about certain people that just makes cats afraid. Huh. A kind-hearted cat rescuer who doesn't get along with cats. Hmm, seems like just visiting the cat's tail would be enough to leave you flustered, let alone running your own cat shelter. That's why we consulted an expert. But Miss Margaret wasn't able to offer a solution to our problem. She's short on workers, so she couldn't spare anyone to help us either. She did give us one piece of advice, though. To enlist the help of the honorary knight and their trusty helper in white. We had just wrapped up our conversation, and the next thing we knew, you two appeared before us like saviors sent by Lord Barbados himself. Well, Paimon's not sure how much Lord Barbados would know about taking care of cats. But that aside, we've never even worked at a shelter before, but somehow we've been turned into the saviors of the entire operation. <laughs> we were just talking about playing with cats. Well, that's true. Even if Paimon has no experience working at a shelter, she's confident she can get on their good side just fine. Like, that's all we need to do here, right? We just need to show Valerina and Rosaria how to get friendly with the cats, 
and everything else should fall into line. Feel free to focus your efforts on Valerina. Just call me if any of the cats need medical attention. Hmm. Huh. If you all can keep the shelter running with minimal effort on my part, this Aaron might turn out to be a good use of my time after all. It's better than church activities in any case. Ah, so that's why you agreed to help. You just wanted to shirk your church duties. Well, I guess I should show you around first. Follow me, you two. Let's make our way to the Furball Fortress. Aww. Oh, it's just a regular house. Oh, gotta say, Paimon was expecting something a little bigger with Fortress in the name and everything. This was the biggest space I could find in the city over the past few weeks. The rent is cheap, so that's a plus. A half a year's worth of rent, along with all the Cat's Tail-inspired furnishings, only cost me a few million mora. Of course, not all of the cats will be staying indefinitely. We plan to offer some of the healthy ones up for adoption. As long as the new future owners prove capable and the cat seems like a good fit, they're welcome to take their new pet back to a loving home. This location is definitely good enough. We could even expand the business one day and start sheltering stray dogs, foxes, or even squirrels. When that day comes, though, I'll probably have to think of a different name. Huh, maybe the... Furball and Friends Fortress would be a better fit. <laughs> I would suggest letting all of this play out first. You still don't know if the customers will even get along with the strays. Huh? Look over there! That cat is staring at us! Oh, it's the little white cat. She's super afraid of people. She ran away when we tried to give her a bath. It took us forever to track her down again. She looks so soft and clean, and her fur is so white and fluffy, just like fresh fallen snow. Wait, that's perfect! We should call her Snowball! Tofu would also be a good fit. Ooh, those are some good names, Traveler, but Paimon thinks she likes Snowball best. Here, kitty kitty! That's it, Snowfall! Good kitty! That's a good kitty! It, it's been, what, a minute? And you already got the cat to listen to you! Did you see that, Miss Rosaria? She's practically a miracle worker! You really are a cat whisperer! Ah, uh, that was nothing! They may be strays, but as long as you give them a good name and call them with love, you're sure to gain their trust eventually. First things first, though. You gotta pay attention to the way you interact with them. Um, how should Paimon put it? Basically, it all comes down to your demeanor. For example, you can't just stand there trembling in fear, Valerina. If you're afraid, the cats are sure to become afraid as well. As for you, Rosaria, you might want to keep an eye on your, uh, facial expressions. <laughs> These poor creatures. Picked up off the streets, given a name, and they now have a loving home. Fate is kind to even the lost souls who have wandered astray. This city really has brought peace and happiness to us all. Aww. Hey, Snowball is snuggling up to Rosaria! Looks like she's not afraid of her anymore. Did Rosaria just... smile? We should pretend like we didn't see anything. No matter. There are more important things to focus on. Anyway, it's getting a bit stuffy in here. I I'm going to go get some air. Call me if you need me. Huh. Paimon thought Rosaria would be happier about that. Please, teach me more of your ways, honorary knight. And you too, oh great cat whisperer. We're sure to get more and more strays coming to the Furball Fortress, and I doubt all of them will be as friendly as Snowball. There's still so much I don't know about interacting with them. No problem, just watch and learn. It's about time we move on to a more advanced lesson. How to get the cats not to just trust you, but to like you. It's all about patience. As long as you put in the effort to get to know them, you'll become best friends in no time. I completely understand. 
The Furball Fortress is still in its trial phase, so the more I can learn at this stage, the better. So we gotta place furniture and try to fill up our attributes, I think. There we go. That looks nice. Now we need to feed the cat. We'll just do some chicken. Snow White puff of well, Okay, I couldn't read that. It was too fast. <laughs> Aw, look how cute! You can play with the cat? Aww! I'm gonna start with the ear. Oh, nope. Did not like that. Okay, let's try here. Oh, yeah, I like that. Alright, I think we maxed it out. Okay. Yay! Mono's here. Me meow. Is this really how cats greet one another? I wonder if my pronunciation is on point. Meow. Looks like Snowball didn't understand even a whisker. Mona, are you trying to speak cat? Uh, Professor Magistus, that is not how you pronounce it. Hey, roar some, some, some sounds more like tigers or lions. That's a good way to frighten a kitty and turn into, it into a scaredy cat. Gales, Paimon, so the rumors were true. You really are working at the Furball Fortress. Working probably isn't the right word. We're helping Valerina and Rosaria out, so we're more like consultants. Yeah, that's it. Being called a consultant sounds really impressive. <laughs> By the way, great astrologer Mona, are you looking to adopt a cat to assist you in your astronomical observations? Based on my understanding of astrology, it shouldn't be hard to teach a cat to read the various aspects of the stars. I might even teach one to help me write manuscripts. Steal a peek at Snowball. <laughs> Boldly staring right at Snowball. Well. <clears throat> On second thought, maybe not. One who can only read the stars, but is still ill-versed at stringing words together, should, would not suffice to convey my illuminating insights. It really, if I really needed an assistant, it would be better to just take a trip to Fontaine and recruit some staff member from the Steambird, or find a Melusine who can use a typewriter and bring them back to Mondstadt. Were I to really adopt a cat, at most it would be to play with it a bit, to relax and relieve the stress from the exhaustion of academic inquiry. One mustn't be a bad owner. When you get tired, it would be best if the cat is tired enough for a nap, cat nap as well. Before I set foot in here, I never imagined hanging out with cats would be such a joy. Ah, how wonderful life would be if we could always be happy like this. <laughs> Looks like you're going to be a really conscious, conscientious owner. Guess this cat's going to be in fine hands. But I've also heard that some cats can be quite rambunctious, always jumping around, biting and clawing the furniture. Imagine my manuscripts or astrology tomes ruined by feline canines. That'd be troublesome indeed. Making a snack out of precious books, Pima can barely imagine something so terrifying. Snowball looks quite well behaved, but seems not to comprehend my meaning. Perhaps we lack that special connection. So, I would like to observe a bit more, you know, keep an eye out for obedient cats. Oh, and I must calculate the cost of a cat bed, cat food, and other expenses. Not too luxurious, but also not too shabby. Wouldn't do to submit the cat to hardship. <clears throat> it's okay, take your time. 
Yeah. Valeria said, Val Valerina. Valerina said she'll adopt even more strays in the future. So even if no cats catch your eye today, you can always come back often to play and have a look. I apologize for my crappy voice acting. I am not a professional. <laughs> I am simply a gamer. Oh, look at me. That looks very cute. Very cute setup. We'll feed it some steak this time. Play with it. Oh. All right, where should we start? Start at the top and wake our way down. Oh, I likes the ears this time. Doing good. Doing good. Start at the top and work our way down. Method seems to be working quite well this time. Nice. This one was quite easy compared to the last one. <laughs> It hissed at us at all. It was a very nice temperament. Amber, huh? <clears throat> meow, 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 meow. Oh, that's the cat's name. Meow, 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 meow. Hmm, both Bunny and Amber have a point. Oh, so that's it. A most astute observation. Actually, Paimon doesn't really get it either, but she can tell that Amber and Bunny have reached an understanding. Gales, Paimon, you're here. I was just thinking about going to look for you. I've already heard all about how you're helping Valeria with the Furball Fortress. That's the Gales and Paimon for you. The second you're back at Mondstadt, you're already being such a huge help. I, the honorary knight, will fulfill my mission, no matter its nature. Speaking of which, what were you and Bunny discussing just now? You seem to be having a really fun conversation. Meow, meow, meow. Oh, I was just asking Bunny about the weather and whether or not it would rain. Huh? Do cats know that kind of thing? <laughs> Lisa said something about that. According to the book she read, cats are very sensitive to humidity and don't like the feeling of being wet. So, if they notice a sudden increase in the humidity, they'll start nervously pawing their faces and licking their fur. Once a cat does something like that, it's a sign that a large rainstorm is likely on its way. Whoa, Paimon had no idea. That's so cool. Guess we just learned something amazing by accident. In that case, Gales, let's pay more attention to the cats during our travels. That way we won't keep getting soaked by huge downpours by those big back black clouds. I suppose we'll have to pay more attention going forward. I originally came here to ask Valeri Val Valerina about something. I keep wanting to say Valeria. <laughs> it's, it's, that's not her name. <laughs> But just as I was talking to her, this little kitty snuggled up close to me and yawned so loudly. It was just too cute. Since she was so affectionate towards me then, when I needed to show how friendly I am too. That's when I remembered what Lisa told me, so I went ahead and asked Bunny about the weather. But she responded by rubbing her face and wagging her tail, then lying on the ground snuggling against my hand. 
<sighs> so is it actually going to rain over the next few days? Super cute. Number three. So we need a whole lot of comfiness. <clears throat> and aesthetics and just a little bit of durability. Perfect. fish this time. Mm -hmm. Smoky Cat. Let's play with this Smoky Cat. Where does the Smoky Cat? Why don't we start at the bottom this time? There we go. Good kitty. Dust ball. Wow. <laughs> it's you. Me. I'm talking. Talking? Racer, are you talking to Dust Ball? Wow. Wow, wow. It seems like Dust Ball is trying to say, that's right. A familiar scent. Looking for friends. It is good. Happy. Friends followed the scent. You came too, happy. On your body, the smell of wind and rain, very familiar. The scent of cats, also familiar. Paimon, very sweet scent. Smell good. Eh, sweet. Could that be the flavor of the pancakes Valerina gave us? Did, did, did Paimon eat that many? <laughs> <clears throat> I gave you half my portion, remember? Really? Paimon didn't even notice. Hmm. It's all the pancakes' fault for being so delicious. <laughs> and Paimon also wants to eat sweet madames. Steaks and hash browns. Oh, and drink some apple cider. Okay, that's the menu for the next meal then. Come on, Gales, let's go place our order with Valerina. You come too, Razor. The Thank you. Dust Ball has brought me lots of nuts and meat boxes. I am very full. Sounds like Valerina ordered delivery then. Did Dust Ball deliver the food to you, Razor? Wow! 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 Paimon never imagined that Cass would actually end up taking care of the customers here in the Furball Fortress. Looks like you really are the cat's meow, eh, Razor? Super cute. Super cute. Is there more? So one of my friends reminded me that Venti's actually allergic to cats. <laughs> I've been playing as him this whole time. <laughs> Sorry, Venti. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. I've just been playing as a full animo team lately, so... We need quite a bit of everything. There we go. We'll give it some chicken. Sure. 
Oh ho, so this is the rumored sacred land that people name the Furball Fortress, and yet it is furnished in such a prosaic manner. Shabby, one might even call it. Surely a few swings woven from the vines of purple agate grapes might, might be built. Pure silver lamps mounted with candles made of abyssal sea salt, all the better to light the cat-feeding patterns with the motives of night-born stars. And yes, statues, forged in the image of cat familiars by melting the vulnerable coinage of lost dynasties and adorning them with strange pearls and dewdrops from the depths of a fjord. Surely this would make an amenable, am, amenable choice? <laughs> You surely must agree, do you not, dear familiar? Hmm, you have yet to declare your name to the princess and think on that then, and know that it shall be your utmost honor to know her. Meow. Dopey. <laughs> His name is Dopey, esteemed princess, esteemed princess, princess. <laughs> Dopey isn't the brightest, and he can't really understand or appreciate your exquisite choice of words. Please show him clemency, princess. And... Hey, wait, no, that's not right. Why does Paimon get like this whenever she sees Fischl? Uh, I, the great cat conjurer, sincerely pay my humble respects. <laughs> As I anticipated, cat conjurers... Though hath once more been brought before our august person by the weavings of the threads of fate. Tis a most pleasing reunion. What a title! Looks like Fischl heard about us from Valerina. By your counsel, much thought has been given of late within Emmer Noctrin to realize the ingenuity ingenuities obtained from prior experiences and I have decided to select the most uh, sagacious and sensible of cat familiars to accompany my eminent person on my sojourns. Wow. Oh, so you were also planning on taking care of a cat, Michel? Well, understandable. Most people want to have their own after seeing just how adorable they are. But Fischl, don't you already have Oz? And the two of you tend to move really fast. Can a cat keep up? Or are you going to have Oz fly while carrying the cat? Hmm. I, the Princess and Vertelung, often traverse 3,000 universes, though such a journey may not be long, having more suitable companions and gaining insights into things easily overlooked naturally wouldn't hurt. Oz also would like to have a cat familiar to play. <clears throat> I am to join forces with, to guarantee that my mood shall shine bright as moonlight every second of every day. Yet, tis a shame that though Oz went to great pains to don a form that sets most e at ease, he could not diminish his majesty fully and could not approach the cat familiars. Whenever dear Oz gets within five paces of a cat familiar, their fur shall inadvertently stand on end and inflate like a bloaty floaty unmoored. Any closer, and hair overtakes them, and they flee for the hills. The Animo Archon's devoted and loyal nuns recommended that Oz repose with, without, and as their advice was sound, I graciously assented. Majesty? Oh, right. Paimon gets it. You mean that Oz's body has so much electro energy, and that the second he enters the furball fortress, all the feline fur gets electrified, right? But if that's true, then how could a cat ever travel with you, Fischl? If only there was some material into that that could block the effects of electro. Then we could make cat clothes out of that material, and then a cat could travel with you and Oz no problem. Those electro slimes will be no match once I have donned this uh, panoply of war. But now that Paimon thinks about it, elemental power is super duper mega strong. If there was a material that could just easily resist something as powerful as the elements, that would be too good to be true. 
We probably shouldn't stand around daydreaming. Ah, the naivete. Do not jump to judge a cat familiar's talents through common sense. The semantic resources of more m mere mortal words struggle to accurately convey their properties. Perhaps somewhere in this world there exists a cat familiar that can dive deep down into the depths, endure in an inferno, and ride upon the wind. Such a special entity would surely have no fear of thunder or lightning. So long as I am patient in my search, I shall find it. Forsooth, even if I should seek for ten or years or a hundred, it shall be but a fleeting instant in the Immernoctronite. <laughs> Additionally, the devotion to one's development in life is as important as the innate nature one is born with. I see this dopey has immense potential. Perhaps after joining my retinue for a spell, it will become all the more familiar with the power of Electro. By happenstance, I, the princessin, have disentangled a million myriad menial affairs, thus allowing myself a tincture of time to spare. Perhaps then it shall not hurt, endeavoring to stay here and familiarize myself with these cat familiars, particularly this dopey. Wow. <laughs> then Paimon hopes you'll have fun here in the Furball Fortress, Fischl. It's a release, right? Oh, oh, I think we gotta do, uh... We gotta do a quest, I think it looks like. A certain special guest suddenly arrives at the Furball Fortress a short while into its trial operations, leaving Valerina in a panic. So we gotta wait till... 8 to 12 the next day. Big ferocious cat. Uh, the cat is hissing at me, Miss Rosaria. I'm scared. You should probably give him some space. Get too close, and all that swatting might catch you in the face. Oh no! Seems like Valerina has run into some more cat-sized trouble. There's something almost dignified about him. Honorary knight, cat whisperer. This big cat just barged in here after Snowball. He must have spotted her when she went out for a walk and followed her all the way back here. Easy, easy. No one's going to hurt you here. All those evil things, all those bad people who forced you to do whatever it took to survive, they can't find you here. You're safe within these walls. You're surrounded by good people now. Their constant hovering might get a little annoying, but it's all for your own good. Just relax. A life of leisure isn't a bad thing, you know. You just have to get used to it. Aww. He, he understood all that? Looks like it worked. <laughs> Smart cat. Whoa, this cat is way bigger than the others. His coloring looks like fresh squeezed buell fruit juice. And he's wearing a scarf too! Huh? Looks like there's some sort of design on it. Oh, it's the symbol of the Knights of Avonius! He deserves a name fit for a knight then. Hmm, he is pretty feisty. How about Sir Pouncelot? <laughs> you really do have a way with cats. He looks way more at ease now. Paimon thinks you deserve to take the credit this time. Sir Pouncelot seemed to calm down right after everything you said to him. Uh, you're getting much better with them, Rosaria. It doesn't matter to me either way. Although, the fact that they're cute doesn't hurt. <laughs> Let Paimon show you how to put Sir Pouncelot completely at ease. Paimon just needs to work a bit more of her magic and he'll be as happy as can be. Alright, now I'm assuming... There. You have to build a space for him. Alright, so lots of durability. There we go. <clears throat> Give him some meat. And 
and then we can play with the kitty. You better be on your best behavior from now on, okay? Don't go causing trouble now. <laughs> I'm a nosier, sweet, happy little cat. You'll get along with everyone just fine. He's so adorable. I just want to scratch his head and pinch his little cheeks. He does have a certain endearing quality about him. When he's not causing trouble, that is. Huh. I wonder how he got that injury around his eye. The traces of restorative potion indicate that Sir Pouncelot should be in the vicinity. Albedo! Huh? Oh! It's the Traveler, Paimon, and Sister Rosaria. And you must be an adventurer. I don't believe we've met. I was a little disappointed Albedo wasn't in the alchemy event, so it's glad to see him here. It appears Sir Pouncelot has taken quite a liking to you. Albedo! It's been such a long time! It's super great to see you! Uh, but are you sure you're in the right place? I'm assuming the captain of the investigation team is here for some important reason? C captain He's a captain of the Knights of Favonius? An important officer just showed up without warning. And I don't even have any refreshments or snacks to offer. Please, allow me to explain, sir. I assure you, this shelter is operating under a legitimate business license. All proper procedures have been followed. Assuming that Albedo has arrived to investigate her business, Valerina frantically searches for the relevant documents while explaining the purpose of the shelter. Valerina appears intimidated by the identity of the visitor, unaware that the investigation team doesn't handle such inspections. There's no need to worry. I was simply in the area helping my team address a small issue. Namely, the location of this cat right here. Not too long ago, Interim Team Feline Treatment Case Number 3, Sir Pouncelot, knocked out the weapons officer who was watching over him. He then fled and disappeared into the city. We knew we had to recover him as fast as possible. The cat belongs to the investigation team and even bears the insignia of the Knights of Favonius. If he were to wreak havoc across the city, well, that would hardly be a welcome result for any party involved. Uh, that would explain the Knights of Thephonia symbol. You're saying Sir Pouncelot is capable of knocking out a knight? And what's with all those official sounding titles you added to his name? Interim treatment case something or other? Is there something else you're not telling us? Uh, well, I suppose I should explain. Two months ago, Sir Pouncelot got lost in the wild and accidentally ingested Whopper Flower Nectar. Due to certain effects that are not entirely understood as of yet, the nectar caused him to triple in size. Triple? Even regular-sized cats can get pretty bold when they're upset. A cat triple the size? Oh, Paimon bets even a hilly churl wouldn't be enough to scare off a cat like that. So that's what happened. No wonder he was so anxious. For cats, or really any animal that lives in the wild, a larger size doesn't exactly confer many advantages. What it actually does is make their appearance more noticeable and their movements less nimble, which in turn means living in perpetual danger of exposing themselves to attacks from predators. In other words, it means living in a constant state of fear. 
Exactly. When Sir Pouncelot stumbled upon our encampment, he looked quite worse for wear. His entire body was riddled with scars, and he appeared exceptionally anxious. Th that's awful! I guess he had a good reason for all that swatting earlier then. If all that had happened to me, I would be afraid of new people and strange animals too. You don't need to worry too much. The problem has already been solved. I administered a restorative potion to eliminate the alchemical effects of the Whopper Flower Nectar and help him return to a normal size. Although he still might appear a bit larger than the average cat, his current size at least should pose no more threat to his quality of life. While in our care, various knights have been taking turns watching over him. In light of his feisty demeanor, Klee decided to call him Sir Pouncelot. We all thought it was quite fitting. We even made him that little scarf as a testament to his time among our ranks. Whoa! Klee and Paimon were totally on the same wavelength with this one! We thought of the exact same name! Great minds really do think alike! <laughs> Sir Pouncelot's extreme level of anxiety and caution around people may be a result of residual trauma from the time of his transformation. You could say he was less than friendly towards the weapons and signals officers on our team. Klee wasn't around that much to entertain him either. However, it appears Sir Pouncelot has taken quite the liking to you. The knights on my team would never have imagined that he could warm up to people like this. <laughs> well, they are our dear cat saviors after all. The famed honorary knight and Paimon the Cat Whisperer. No matter how feisty or frightening the cat, after a few minutes with the Traveler and Paimon, they'll be as sweet as can be. If that's the case, then I have a question for you both. Would you be willing to adopt Sir Pouncelot? Wait, really? But doesn't he belong to your team? Well, we did take him in, but it was simply out of necessity. We were always planning to find him a permanent home after his condition became more stable. The investigation team is no place for a pet. We are a combat unit after all. Any knight he got close to would have to go on assignment eventually. It's hardly appropriate to just leave him at camp, and bringing him on our missions would only frighten him further. All good points. He's been through quite the ordeal already. For a creature like that, it's best to keep him away from potential triggers. That way he can slowly recover in peace. A nice cozy little home for him in the Serena teapot. It has everything he could want, and most importantly, no monsters. Oh yeah. Uh, great. Welcome to the family, Sir Pouncelot. Thank you so much, Albedo. Oh, no need to thank me. If you find yourselves with some time on your hands, maybe you can bring him by the encampment sometime. I'm sure my fellow knights would love a chance to see his calmer side. I got to witness such a special moment. I do believe this counts as the Furball Fortress's first successful adoption. Hey, my veil is not a handkerchief. It appears you enjoy interacting with small animals, Sister Rosaria. I must admit, I find that a bit surprising. Paimon can also sense that you're an animal lover, Rosaria. You definitely have a way with cats. You just haven't realized it yet. After all, it's not a side of you that comes out very often. Snowball warmed up to you right from the start, and you were the one that helped Sir Pouncelot calm down back there. Oh, uh, I didn't really do anything, though. I was just there. Ah, I've got it. I've learned so many useful tips from our dear cat saviors recently. I've decided to extend the shelter's trial period for a bit in order to go over what I've learned. With some effort, I hope I can be a Cat Whisperer too one day. For now though, I'll settle for Cat Whisperer... in training. <laughs> when I open for good, what do you say we run the shelter together, Miss Rosaria? With the two of us, we could rescue every stray in Mondstadt! Hmm, the sister and the Whisperer working together! Almost sounds like it was meant to be! <laughs> oh, well... This errand hasn't proved to be too troublesome. It's light on work and stress. I suppose 
I wouldn't be opposed to your suggestion. She enjoyed it. I don't know much about rescuing stray animals, but this seems to be quite the milestone. Allow me to offer my congratulations. If my fellow knights run into any strays, I'll be sure to tell them to send them your way. Thank you, thank you, thank you! I really can't thank you all enough for your support! Don't worry, there's a generous reward in store for each and every one of you. The trial phase of the Furball Fortress could not have been more successful. When we open for good, you all simply must come to the opening ceremony. We'll cut the ribbon together. Now that's what Paimon calls a successful commission. Rewarding in more ways than one. Mora, a sense of accomplishment, and of course, our special friend, Sir Pamsalot. Talk about a win-win-win. Paimon can't wait for the Furball Fortress to open for good. Yay. We got a kitty. My teapot isn't really built up. I pretty much just use it to farm friendship. <laughs> oh, there's some friends in here. And I actually have some furniture. Look at that. <laughs> I didn't even think I did. Do we have room to put them in here? Yeah. He has plenty of friends. He is quite a bit bigger than the other cats. I think somebody said... Can... Oh, you can summon the kitties. Aww. I hope they add other animals, because that'd be nice. Oh, he still doesn't like his head back. Doesn't like his tail pad either. <laughs> He's so cute though. <laughs> We can pet all the kitties. Oh, he doesn't like his head pet. Just strange, because I don't think I've ever met a cat that didn't like their head pet, unless they just don't like being pet at all. having to pet all these cats. <laughs> We're torturing him. Wahaha. All right. Well, that's all for today. I just wanted to play through the cat event. I think we did everything. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day and see you again soon. Bye.